everybody, it's Amy from RaisingArrows.net here and I want to share with you today about a cookbook that I've had for several years now. Um, I got it from my mom and it's favorite recipes and it's from 1955. And the interesting thing about this, and I have talked to you before about um, my mom and my grandma and my great grandma's um, menu planning, the way that they do that. I have a video here about that. But the interesting thing about this is not really the recipes, but that um, inside here, they have, they have like a bride menu and stuff like that, but they have actual, um, menus that are, you know, nutritionally sound, um, in planning meals, the first factor to consider is nutrition and for their guidelines, they have milk and milk products, a pint of milk daily for adults and a quart for children. And then they have two or more servings of vegetables daily other than potatoes should include one green and one yellow fruits, two or more servings daily, and at least one raw um, citrus fruit or tomato daily and then eggs three to five a week and one a day is preferred meat cheese fish and poultry one or more servings daily cereal and bread two or more servings daily enriched or with whole grain value um, this had been the era of like wonder bread when things were being enriched um, initially and then butter two or more tablespoons daily and then they go on to share ideas for breakfast, lunch, or supper is what it says on there, and dinner. Now, my husband and I have a big debate about whether it's supper or dinner, and we have decided some of it is a cultural thing. In agrarian cultures, um, a lot of times you would have supper toward the five o'clock hour or so, kind of like in parts of England where tea is more like an actual meal rather than tea. Um, <clears throat> and so this says lunch or supper. Um, I would love to hear from you what you consider lunch or supper or dinner um, and just, you know, maybe where you're from or culturally how you got to that place because it's really interesting to me. But I'm going to show these to you. Um, okay, so you see there's a breakfast, lunch, or supper and dinner. And like this breakfast here, it is um, on this side is grapefruit, hot cereal with cream, buttered toast, coffee, and milk. Okay, so in my world, that's a lot of food for breakfast. Um, I would probably not have all of that, um, but I find it really fascinating that that's like a pretty massive breakfast in my opinion. A grapefruit, hot cereal with cream, buttered toast, and then coffee or milk. Um, the breakfast on the other side here is orange juice, waffles, syrup, crisp bacon, coffee, and milk. Um, so basically your main meal there is the waffles and the bacon. Um, and then this actually has pages and pages of this. I love it because it's so fascinating to me, um, the ideas and what people were eating in 1955. Um, like for instance, here's one of stewed apricots. No, <laughs> hot cereal with cream, buttered toast, coffee and milk. Um, this one has, let's see, tomato juice, bacon and eggs, buttered toast and jelly, coffee and milk. And it's just, I don't know, prunes. How about that? Prunes for breakfast, prepared cereal with cream, cinnamon toast, coffee and milk. So it's just, that's fascinating to me. So on to the lunch or supper um, this page has tuna sandwiches, sliced tomatoes, um, fresh fruit, a cookie and coffee or tea and milk. And then the one on the other side has baked eggs in cream. No, that's probably not my thing either. Um, cabbage slaw, toast triangles, cherry pie, coffee or tea and milk. So it's interesting too, 
both the lunch and the dinner has um, some sort of dessert with it. And I know that my dad always had some sort of dessert, something sweet to finish his meal, even if it was just like a cookie um, or a little piece of candy or something. He would always finish his meal with something sweet. They also have, if you can see this here, okay, so you see how at the end of this there's an asterisk? That means that the recipe is in this book. Now, the funny thing is they don't tell you where it is in the book. You have to go searching for it. But like this is um, deluxe macaroni and cheese and then an apple salad, bread, butter, ice cream, and cookies. This is for lunch and uh, coffee, tea, or milk. And so if it has an asterisk by it, you can go and eventually find it. Now, the fun thing about this um, cookbook too is that somebody along the way um, put these recipes in here. These are recipes that have been clipped out of a newspaper and um, they have things like quickie pumpkin pie and luscious devil food cake um, and then quick Texas pound cake, wacky cake. It uh, seems like it's mostly sweets. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, I think it's fun to see what people thought were worth cutting out of the newspaper. And these are called favorite recipes. And this used to be a column in this particular newspaper. I don't think they do it anymore. Um, but I vaguely remember even when I was a kid um, that there were still recipes in the newspaper. And actually, I think I've talked about this before, but the Amish cook, um, I don't know if any of you had that syndicated column. I think it may still be a column. I don't take the newspaper anymore, so I don't know. Um, but when I was a kid, and then even when I was newly married, my mom would send me the cutout of the Amish cook and the recipes that she shared there. And it was such a neat column. I think we are all really interested in what everybody else eats. Um, for some reason, we're fascinated by food. And um, so it's just neat to see that. But let's go over one last thing in here, the dinners that they had. Um, again, you've got the asterisk here and here for the dinner recipes. And you've got a pork chop vegetable casserole, tossed green salad, biscuits, butter, lemon fluff, coffee, tea, or milk. And then this one is stuffed peppers, cottage fried potatoes, perfection salad. I don't even know what that is and there's no asterisk beside it. So I can't, I can't look and see what it is. I probably will have to look that up. Does anybody know what perfection salad is? I'm guessing it's some sort of gelatin thing because it was 1955 after all. So gelatin was like the thing. Um, and then broccoli, bread, butter, apricot, sherbet, or sorry, sherbet. Um, I grew up not realizing there was no R in sherbet, sherbet, <laughs> sherbet, maybe that's what it is. Okay. So anyway, that's your, um, that's your dessert. <clears throat> and then you have coffee, tea and milk. And like I said, there's, there's just pages of these and it is so fun <laughs> for me to see what was considered like a well-rounded meal in 1955, what they were having for desserts and for sides. Um, the sides are fairly simple as I talked about in the video that I did on great grandma's meal plan, the sides were always very simple and typically repeated over and over. The other interesting thing about this book too is that there is no index um, at the back of the book, you don't have any sort of index except like the page that they start on. So there's not like an actual name. Like, so even like I found this, um, Ozark pudding. I don't know what Ozark pudding is. And I don't have time to like look through here and try to find it for you. But unless I just accidentally happened upon it. Um, but it's not in the back of the book either. There's just no index except where the different sections are. There is a calorie chart at the back of the book. And like I said at the beginning, there is a bride section, which I think is kind of cute. Um, it's basically recipes for two. And they talk about, you know, what new brides might need to know. And then they have a whole section 
that are just recipes that work for two people because when you're a new bride, there's usually just two of you, not always. I also loved these pictures of the women who put together this cookbook and then the editor here. And I just, I love it. It's so, it's so nostalgic, so 1955. Um, but it's just super fun. I mean, look at, look at the hair, the hairdos there and I just, yeah, super fun. So anyway, this is one of, I have two or three of these and I just love these books. Basically, the recipes that you saw here, they were actually compiled yearly. The recipes that showed up in the newspaper were compiled yearly and put into this book every single year and then sold as a cookbook, which I think is a really neat idea. And I, I have a little bit of a cookbook problem. Um, I really, really, really love cookbooks and I buy lots of cookbooks. Um, I, I don't know what my deal is. I just really, I like to read cookbooks. I will get cookbooks at the library just to read them. So I, maybe I'm weird. Um, tell me if you are like that too, and then I won't feel so bad, <laughs> but I really do like cookbooks. And so anytime I can get my hands on something that's really unique, a unique cookbook with interesting cultural foods, I really like those as well. I have several Amish cookbooks. I have several from the Amish cook. Like I said, that my mom would send me those newspaper clippings. And so I just really enjoy that kind of thing. But I just wanted to share this with you. I wanted to share with you the menu plans that they had. And um, if you'd like to hear more, let me know. Um, I do plan to share some recipes from different cookbooks that I have and some more about menu planning and things that I have learned from my mom and my 103 year old grandma and then what they learned from um, their mom as well, her, my grandma's mom. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you and I thank you so much for joining me here and I will see you next time.